Uh, Balderdash Academy, competitive comedy. Good for your health, like a yearly colonoscopy. Bring a flask, don't forget your hall pass. If you need a laugh, let me introduce the school staff. Marie Stewart Harmon teaches home economics. See her after class for some home brewed tonics. Sex with me is like Nate Green, cause finishing on top is his normal routine. Coach Steve brings the show sports knowledge, but he's bad at portmanteaus cause he didn't go to college. Polly McGill spits words like an Uzi. She wins every game, can't name a single movie. They call him Randy Hunt, the theater guru. He'll always almost win like deja vu do. Carla Rose Dubois, you better watch your back. She's notoriously known for teaching music facts. And Baba Blanc gets no disrespect. Don't talk back, cause he's technically correct. Yes, let's go. Ball the Dash Academy, baby. All right, sit down, class is starting. Welcome back to Balderdash Academy. Our points are, we have Nate in last place with 50 points, Marie with 100, Carla Rose with 200, and Molly in the lead with 250 points. Joining us today is visiting Professor Renee S. DeCamillis, author, musician, and badass hippie. Before we move on to our next game, we're back for our final question from the Balderdash randomizer. It's 30 seconds or less. The spin will generate a random question that Renee will try to answer in 30 seconds or less. And today's question. Hmm. Oh, oh, this is good. Renee, what is your favorite word and why? Whoa. My favorite word. Ominous. Oh. Mm. <laughs> Good do, 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 now, why do, 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 do. ominous? It's a great word. I love it the is. word. Why ominous? Well, right, horror. So, I like <laughs> ominous things. Yeah. But my husband also go. used to be in a band, a uh, uh, thrash metal band, and they had a really <laughs> kick ass song called Ominous. So, you know, kind Very of put cool. the two things together. Yeah. And I like the word ominous. I love that. Yeah. <laughs> I jumped into a mosh pit for that, definitely. <laughs> It is now Again. time for our <laughs> pop quiz. Five, four, three, two, one. Lift off. We have a lift off. Ah. So now that with our monthly pop one. quiz, Professor of Steam, Nate Green. Nate, what do you have for us? An awesome intro song. I know. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so good. It just kept going. Awesome. I know. And a question. Uh, and this actually uh, comes about. Uh, well, all right. So in the 1980s Nightmare on Elm Street horror movie mm -hmm. franchise, uh, there's a woman who is uh, terrorized in her dreams. And mm -hmm. when she wakes up, her hair has gone white. So my question is, can he, can hair really turn white from fright? Mm. And and um, please give me the deets. Uh, so mm -hmm. let's let's go start off here with Bob. He hasn't answered many questions uh, <laughs> yet this game. Mm -hmm. So the question is, can a person's hair turn white from fright? Yes. And the 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 answer is yes, but only if the fright rhymes with their greatest fear. Mm. Interesting. So, yeah, it, 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 if it doesn't rhyme, it's just not going to work. Some people are immune to the phenomena, like myself, completely immune. <laughs> uh, I, I can go through horrible yeah. frights. My hair will never turn white. It, some some people call it a gift. Hmm. Uh, but again, the answer is yes, but only if their fright rhymes with their greatest fear. It's a verb. Mm -hmm. It's a, a word based phenomena. All right. Mm -hmm. uh, so rhyming. Uh, I'm not good at that. So <laughs> I guess that would be fine for me, although I am losing my hair, too. So let's go with uh, Molly. 
Um, yes, of course, of course, hair can turn white from fright. Everyone knows that. Um, look at any film or or uh, movie, which is the same thing as a film. <laughs> or, uh, anybody that you see that's scared or people walk around on Halloween. Anyways, when someone gets scared, what happens? All the blood drains out of their face, right? They all go... <gasps> And they turn white and pale as a ghost, right? We've all heard it. Now, mm -hmm. if the fright is so bad that it also goes to the hair follicle, I'm talking frighty, fright, fright, people. This is like as scared as you can be. So not only does all the Blaine, <laughs> the Blaine, David Blaine, he does this trick. Not only yeah, does the blood does. <laughs> out of your body, but it goes into the hair and sucks the uh, color out as well, turning it white. Right, right. So, okay. So David Blaine sucks the color out of your hair. He's done movies. it only twice in Los Angeles. All right. That's what I gathered. <laughs> um, and uh, Carla Rose, let's go with you. Hi. Well, look, when we have a theory, we try to prove it by looking back at things in culture or history where it's been noted to kind of give it some credence. Clearwater and revival. And so, <laughs> revival. Isn't it? Speaking of music, that's where we find uh, the answer here. We hear a reference to that in the early 90s song by the curiously deep voiced crash test dummies there is a verse in their song mm, 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 where he said once there was a scared who da, 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 something something his <laughs> hair had turned from black into bright white so <laughs> there is a reference that this man wrote the song about witnessing this kid in school his hair had turned from black into bright white and then he went mm, 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 mm. who knows like we don't know but since then, technology has come far into studying this. And what we know now is the core of our, ha our hair, each hair is magnetized. And when we're frightened enough, the core gets demagnetized and all the color scales fall off at once. That's why usually when someone's hair turns white from fright, there's usually a pile of uh, colored scales that are the color of their hair, usually in the general vicinity. If they get to it in time, they can remagnetize their hair core and attach the hair <laughs> powder back onto their hair and recolorize their hair. But they have a very short window of time, approximately 10.5 hours. And I'm going to say my footnote, look at crash test dummies uh, to prove my theory. I got to be honest with you, the crash test dummies were the only band that I could actually sing in karaoke. <laughs> I can see that. All right, so what I gathered was crash test dummies are like magnets, and they flake. They yeah, they that's what I got flake too, powder. Okay, <laughs> crash test dummies mm -hmm. flaking powder. Yep. Modern mm -hmm. modern day Shakespearean. That, that about sums it up. Mm -hmm. Got it, uh, Marie. Yep. Uh, yeah. Yes. Can your hair turn white from fright? I hate to break it to you all, but no, it can't. Has anybody seen Miracle on 34th Street? I'm sure we all have. It's a beloved Christmas movie. Santa Claus is laying in bed and he makes sure that his beard is outside of the covers because he says if they're outside, they will grow better. But Kris Kringle was wrong. It actually is the cold air is what turned his hair, his beard white. Now, in these hauntings, this woman who was being in the nightmares, uh, she was sleeping with the window open. It was cold air, cold air rushing in. Mm -hmm. Very logical explanation for a mysterious situation. But it's it's all logic. It's all just cool air coming in and blowing around those locks. And cold air makes them just as like we learned from Santa. Right? Yeah. yeah. So yeah. Yeah. Cold air turns your hair yeah. white, which is in why all Rapunzel's, fairness, Nate, it doesn't. Oh, go on. <laughs> which is why Rapunzel's hair is always white. Um, it yes. explains the Scandinavians. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, I'm gonna. I want uh, Renee. I'd love you to score this before I give out the real answer, um, because these are fantastic answers, and I'm gonna go in reverse because my memory works better that way. Um, Marie's cold air will do the trick. Uh, mm -hmm. It will turn your hair white. Uh, Carla Rose's crash test dummies get magnetized. You can put them on your refrigerator. Um, <laughs> Molly. <laughs> said uh it was the she cries out the color no what was it 
You get so scared. That you, you get so scared. Fail. But if you get super scared, right. it sucks it out from your hair follicles as well. Yep. Fo- follicle sucks uh, with David Blaine in the movies. <laughs> yeah. uh, and Bob uh, said that you, you can do that. And his answer was also very good, too. Right, Bob? <laughs> It was very good. It came from the hood. It was oh, it rhymed. Something about blood. (laughs) If if you get scared, then you gotta be haired white. Um, Yeah. So yeah, rhyming. Can't rhyme. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, So which one do you which one do you want to shell out some points to? Well. I have an extremely bad habit of rhyming when I don't even mean to. So I'm going to go with Bob on this one. There we and, go. Thank you. Hmm, how about hmm, 125? Well, 125. Was it 125th on or 125? 125th of a point. <laughs> oh, okay. 125th of a point. <laughs> I just, I, I'm last. I'm just wondering if anybody else could get in. Left. Anyway, uh, the, the correct answer is yes and no. Uh, actually, there is no no way that you can be scared so much that your hair just turns white. Uh, and this is from Doctor Doctor David <gasps> Osterinch, um, who's an associate director of the Osterinch Medical Group in New York. Now. It can't do sand. that, but there is something that it can do. It can elevate your stress levels, which would then uh, ha- induce oh. alopecia areata, which is an mm-hmm. autoimmune condition that attacks mm-hmm. hair follicles, causing pigmented hair, such as black, brown, red, blonde, to fall out, leaving just the gray and white non-pigmented hair. So it, okay. the stress, if you get scared enough, can cause a certain type of alopecia that makes you lose all of your hair that has color, leaving only the white hair. Um, he also I'm said that wow. when this came about, it was uh, in in uh, writing. Um, and like, I don't know when, but like back before there was really good <laughs> hair dye. Um, and so... Back then, it might be possible for somebody to dye their hair, go swimming or, or take a shower or something, and then it, the hair dye washes out, and all of a sudden, they're white hair. Um, mm. But I like the science-y answer better. <laughs> <laughs> and and the David right. Blaine one. <laughs> and the David, it has to be the David Blaine. Now, yeah. our next game is a fan favorite not Molly's, but it's a fan favorite. Oh, technically Lordy, correct. Lordy, Lordy. Now, I will read a description of a movie that is technically correct. Uh, Our yep. faculty will all come up with an answer as fast as possible and present it one by one. Renee mm-hmm. will award points to the answers that she likes best. Now, movie number one. A single mother needs help moving. Molly... A single mother needs help moving. What's the film? Bird Box. Bird Box, technically correct. Carla Rose, what do you what do you got? Um, what's what's her name with uh, Robin Williams? Um, <laughs> Bye fruiting. What's that one? Mrs. Doubtfire. Mrs. Doubtfire. Thank you, Molly. All right, Mrs. Doubtfire, you, Marie. What do you have? Um, Bambi. <laughs> Bambi. Oh, mate. Yeah. <laughs> um, a single mother needs help moving. Uh, I'm going to say, what's eating Gilbert Grape? What's eating no. Gilbert Grape? We have Molly with Bird Box, Carla Rose with Mrs. Doubtfire, Marie with Bambi, which is the most technically correct answer of the bunch. <laughs> I know. And... <laughs> Mate with what's eating Gilbert Grape. The real answer is the secret of Nim. Oh, oh, secret of Nim. Nicodemus. That scared me. So, Renee, how would you like to score? Well, I'm going with Molly on this one because I love Bird Box. 
And seen yeah, it. that's a creative way to look at it. That movie. Um, mm-hmm. I'm going to go with, how about um, 150? Wow. Thank you. 150. I wonder if you hour? blindfolded, though. You know, you're just like, yeah, where did I put the freaking spatula? <laughs> you know, I all right. No, I haven't seen Bird Box, but does she Never come mind. across another mother that's also blindfolded? And do they have a pinata? No, we are not yes, oh, that's I the entire this. movie. Yeah. Is you How blindfold you know mothers, yeah. and then they're attacked by pinatas. It's a common. Okay. Um, yeah. Is that one of those yeah. uh, monthly subscription boxes? I think I get that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, movie number two. A disgruntled IT employee sells company secrets. A disgruntled IT employee sells company secrets. Carla Rose, what's your answer? Um, I'm going to say Free Willy. Free Willy. <laughs> Not the one you all know. <laughs> Marie, what do you got? Uh, the Social Network. Social network. Nate, what do you have? Snowden. Snowden. <laughs> Snowden. <laughs> All right. And Molly. Um, I can't think of the name of the other one I want to say, so I'm just going to say this one that I know the name of. And is this the name of it? Five Alive? Short Circuit. Five. Short Circuit. Short Circuit. Short Johnny Five. Circuit. <laughs> Johnny Five is alive. Be better. Short Circuit. <laughs> So we have a a disgruntled IT employee sells company secrets. We have Carla Rose with Free Willy, Marie with a social network, Nate with Snowden, Molly with Short Circuit. The answer is, of course, Jurassic Park. (laughs) Yep. That's my favorite movie. I disappoint myself. (laughs) It is Carla Rose's Shawshank Redemption. (laughs) Renee, how would you like to score? (laughs) (laughs) I'm sorry, Jeff Goldblum. I'm so sorry. (laughs) Oh <laughs> you let him down. I let him so down. I love you. How would you like to score, um, Renee? Let's see. Um, I had no idea on that one. <laughs> <laughs> um, Nor did we. Apparently. <laughs> well, I'm going to say the one that sounded the most believable was the social network. So I'm going to say for Marie. And mm-hmm. I'm going to give you, um, I'm going to give you a hundred. Nice. Thank you. 100 for Marie. Our next movie, Friends Try to Raise the Funds to Save Their Home. Friends Try to Raise Funds to Save Their Home. Marie, what do you have? Oh, my God. Um, the That one with Shia LaBeouf when he's a kid and he's playing baseball. The Sandlot? Is that what it's called? The Sandlot? Marie with the Sandlot. Nate, what do you have? Yeah, that's what I'm going Zathura. Zathura from Chris Van Allsburg. Molly, what do you have? Um, um, what's that? <laughs> what's that? <laughs> Pony Boy in it? What's that one? They don't even have a home. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> with a home oh, come on. There's going to be a house in a movie, McGill. Think, think. Um, <laughs> Bird box. <laughs> bird box. Is it bigger than a bread box? It has the home in it. Home and then- alone. Mm-hmm. Carla Rose, yeah. what's your answer? Wayne's World. Wayne's World. Wayne's World. All right. So we have uh, friends try to raise the funds to save their home. We have Marie with the Sandlot. <laughs> Nate with Zathura, <laughs> Molly with Home Alone, Carla Rose with Wayne's World. The answer will never say die. It's the Goonies. <laughs> I was oh, like, yeah. I'm a pony boy. God damn, I can't remember anything. <laughs> Renee, how would you like to score? Oh, God. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> I crossed my mind, too. Dang it. Um, Why? The Outsiders. Uh, Thank you, Alan. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, it's... I'm, I'm going to go with Nate. I'm going to go with Nate. I'm going to give you... Right. 1,000. 75 points. 1,075. points. Movie number four, our last movie in Technically Correct. 
A lost custodian gets help from a psychologist. A lost custodian gets help from a psychologist. <laughs> Nate. What about Bob? Oh, that's what what oh. about Bob? <laughs> Molly, what do you have? Uh, good, what's the name of it? Um, we good, uh, <laughs> Goodwill Hunting. Goodwill Hunting. Goodwill Hunting for Molly. Carla Rose, what do you got? Okay, so I was going to say what about Damn Bob, Molly. but because um, I don't think you could do two of the same, I'm going to do the one with Billy Crystal where he goes on a... um where he goes on like a ranch with some friends or something. Monsters Inc. <laughs> no, the other one where he, you actually oh. see his face and he's not an eyeball. Um, oh. The ranch. City one. slickers. City slickers. slickers. Yes. <laughs> Marie, what do you got? I was also going to say Goodwill hunting, but now I'm going to come up with something else. <laughs> um, I just, I would like to remind like... you. I want to remind everybody that the rules are, you have to answer as fast as you can. Not I that know. you can't gonna... duplicate rules. <laughs> um, I, oh. That one with Matt Damon and Ben Affleck oh. and the girl and the, yeah. The Martian. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Jay and Silent Bob strikes back. <laughs> yes. Yeah, they're both in that. Yeah. Oh, God, sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, so we have a custodian, lost custodian, gets help from a psychologist, Nate with What About Bob, Molly with Goodwill Hunting, Carla Rose with City Slickers, and Marie with Goodwill Hunting <laughs> slash Jay and Silent Bob Strikes Back. Damn. The answer, the I gotta say, how do you like them apples? Molly got Holy one right. It's Goodwill yes, Hunting. I know. <laughs> Dude, I knew that was making me look good. As soon as, as, soon as she said it, I knew it, yeah. <laughs> I got, you know, Steve is away at an away game right now. I got to call him to tell him because no he's not going to believe, gonna believe it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Good night. Renee, how would you like to score? <laughs> Nate, don't I... give him faces. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think I'm gonna go with. Hmm. I'm gonna go with Nate again. Oh, Nate, <laughs> two thousand. <laughs> How about a hundred? Two thousand oh. one hundred <laughs> from <laughs> Nate. <laughs> so. <laughs> uh. Baby steps. So baby steps to not in last. Yes. <laughs> Before we get to our final scores, Renee, I want to thank you for being our visiting professor on the first yes. episode Yay! of the second season. We're doing a new format, so I hope you had fun. Um, where yes. can people find your work? Um, oh, well, of course, on Amazon. Um, but you can also find me at um, some of the local indie bookstores around. We, I'm at yes. um, Almost Music. Um, in uh, Quiet City Books up in Lewiston. I am even, you can even find me at uh, Walmart, Target, you know. <laughs> what but if I if wanted you to follow Indy, you? You can always, you, what's that? What if I wanted to follow you on the interwebs? Oh, oh where can I you thought. Me? <laughs> <laughs> in person. I'm like, she leaves her house around 8.45 in the morning. Want a coffee? <laughs> well i'm on i'm on facebook i'm on instagram i'm on twitter i don't have any type of special name just you know you can find me in right. my real name and awesome. all of her links are in the description for international listeners and viewers um there are sites that contain her work that you can get internationally so check it out in the description uh renee thanks thank you once Yay, again you. for coming on uh, before Thanks I announce our final scores, it is time for tonight's moral. Now, after playing the game, after taking a substantial time off from doing this show, uh, I listened to everything you had to say, and one, one thing tonight is very, very clear. After 18 episodes and hundreds and hundreds of questions, if given enough time, Molly will get a technically correct 
I already feel like a winner. It's okay. I didn't win. I feel like a winner. I'm leaving here is that, a winner. Is that why? Because that, that trophy right there. Is that there? why the trophy's right there? In the foreground. The trophy's the there. The goal. You, well, that, that is reached. the question. Did our grand champion maintain her title? So, but I feel like a winner. Well, the answer is we have myself with 125 points. We have Marie and Carla Rose tied with 200. We have Nate with 225 and in the lead for season two, our grand champion, Molly McGill with an even 400 yeah, points. <laughs> you deserve well it. Good done. job. You deserve it. Thanks, guys. There's no sarcasm. I'm proud of you. Thank you. <laughs> that was an awesome game. Thank you so much, Renee. Yes, thank you, Thank you, you all for visiting us at Balderdash Academy. I've been your headmaster, Bob LeBlanc. Joining me has been our faculty, <laughs> Professor of Music Theory, Carla Rose Dubois. Good, well played. Hi. Professor Michael of Trump. Steam, Nate Green. Thank you. Oh, you guys can put the fire out now. Thanks. Okay. <laughs> Professor of Home Ec and Wellness, Marie Stewart Harmon. As usual, my face hurts now. Uh -oh. <laughs> Our continued reigning champion, Molly McGill. I feel like this is somehow going to come off back season to bite me in the butt. <laughs> and our visiting professor, Renee S. DeCamillis. Renee, thank you once again for coming on. Thank you, Renee. It was great having you as our first visiting professor of the 2021-22 school year. Remember to like and subscribe to the video. Also remember that we have options available if you'd like to support the show directly. You can also show your school pride with merch from our store. And we are also booking live shows improv comedy and team building throughout new england so you can now have our faculty entertain you at your location or your next corporate event your restaurant wherever you need entertainment links to everything are in the description thank you for watching and have a good night Go Dashers!